Are you looking to start a course but not quite sure what level you're even at? Or where you should begin? Or what type of course maybe you should create? What should you do or where should you go to validate your idea? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, here's the question. How are we dark horses? You know, the ones everyone is betting against, the ones they don't expect to win, place, or even show on the track, and they'll even laugh on us when we talk about trying. How do we show the world our greatness and triumph? Come on. Well, that's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. This is The Dark Horse Entrepreneur. My name is Tracy Brinkman. What is up? What is up? What the hell is up, my Dark Horse friends and family? Welcome back to your ongoing dose of course creation learning. I'm your Dark Horse host, Tracy Brinkman, and you, well, that, my friend, is infinitely more important. You are are a driven entrepreneur, you are a driven infopreneur more specifically, and you're here because you're ready to start, restart, kickstart, and just start leveling up with some great marketing, personal, or business tips and results in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. And that's why I'm here hitting you with another solo success episode on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur as we dive deep into your entrepreneur and course creation success with some actionable advice, tips, and steps designed to help you level up your game. Because as we already know, right, there are no shortcuts to success except for taking those little steps towards your goal every single day. Now, today we're going to be chatting about the four types of course creators that I think there are out there. But before we kick this off, I want to make sure you keep getting all these success tips in infopreneurship and course creation. And to make so to make sure you keep getting them, go on down there and hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to this for the first time, maybe you want to listen a little further. But once you get that first gem, pause it. Go on down there, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, go ahead and leave us a five-star rating and drop us some kind words in the reviews. It is those subscribes, ratings, and reviews is your way of telling all those podcast platforms out there that you are getting some value. Helps lift us up in the rankings a little bit so that we can reach more driven infopreneurs just like yourself. So please take a moment and show the love and help spread the word. I appreciate you. Today we're going to talk about the four types of course creators I think that are out there. And the question I want to ask you is, which type of course creator are you? Now, I think in the realm of course creators, there's a a few different things is these images that kind of pop up in our heads, right? We think about maybe that distinguished professor that's standing in front of a class of hungry and enthusiastic students, you know, trying to share content or maybe some highly paid speaker. Well, right. Many of us have been to those conferences where that keynote speaker comes in and just drops all this amazing knowledge. And then there's those that have uh, maybe studied a given arena for years and years and years, or the, the gentleman or the lady who's made their millions in their zone of interest. And now they're coming before you to share some of that content and help you along the path that they just traveled. Now, if we think about all the different types of course creators that are out there, some of them will fit any one of those images, others won't. Um, Really, if you think about it, course creators, even like you and me, come in all types and shapes and sizes and genders and ages and nationalities, skill levels and expertise levels. And all that said, I really think if you're listening to this video or listening to this podcast, you have a course lurking inside you. And if I don't want you to take this lightly because it's not like you're just going to push a button and all of a sudden, boom, there's my course and you're going to make millions of dollars because it's not stupid simple, but it is pretty easy to do. Because again, I think each of us have something inside of us that we can share to help empower others, to help teach others, to help bring others along a path we may have traveled and hopefully help them avoid some of these stumbles and bumbles and falls and face plants that you and I have experienced. Help them face their challenges and 
go under, jump over, go around or bash through the restrictions and the barriers and the challenges that we know they're facing. And after years of being in the coaching arena and the online space and doing podcasting and, and chatting with folks of all levels, right? Billionaire levels all the way down to the guy that's just dreaming about it. I think I've, I, I want to bucket uh, course creators into four types. And that begs the question I asked you just a little while ago, which type are you? All right, so type number one is the insider. Now, I call him the insider because this is the, the guy or the gal that's out there uh, wanting to create a course about a passion topic, right? Something they just totally vibe with. They're totally enthusiastic about it. They know lots of the ins and outs about it. Maybe they've been grinding away at it for a while, or maybe it's, you know, even brand new to them, but they just love it to death, man. And it could be anything. It could be hairstyles, how to braid hair, plucking eyebrows, doing gardening, motorcycle riding, cars. It was the, the, the topics are endless. Martial arts, right? MMA. But at the end of the day, they don't really consider themselves experts, but they do know quite a bit about their topic or hobby. And even if they don't realize it themselves, right, they do find that when someone shows an interest in that topic or hobby, they come to them because inside that friends or that family member's circle of influence, you as the course creator, as that insider, are their expert, right? And as a result of that, you're like, hmm, I do know a lot about this. And perhaps I could derive a, a little moniker of income by sharing my knowledge. And as I continue and get better and travel further down my road of my insider knowledge, um, I can become an expert and lead myself down towards those other three levels that we'll be talking about here. Now, as an insider, you're going to think about, well, how could I do that? Well, I think there's probably a few steps you can go through to help begin to teach others. And I think the first step you're going to want to go through to, to help do that is, of course, to validate your idea, to make sure that there's enough interest out there that you could derive a little income. Because, and I heard this example given uh, by a fellow podcasting friend of mine who said that if you're super passionate about licking drywall, I'm not sure there's a real market out there uh, for teaching on how to lick. Dr there might be. I don't know. I could be trumping on something that's, you know, maybe the next millionaire is going to come out of. But you get my point here. So you can start poking around the Internet and, you know, eavesdropping, you know, doing a little, uh, we'll call it research, um, through some social listening, poke around out there in different uh, social groups, uh, looking for trending hashtags. If there's, if there's enough interest, and when I mean enough interest, if you see people in Facebook groups or having threads on Twitter or having threads on any of the social platforms around your passion topic, then there's probably a great opportunity for you to leverage your knowledge into an online course. And if I want to give you some more specifics about where to look, look around for blogs. So whatever passion project, you know, licking drywall, if we look at that, if I go looking for licking drywall blogs, and I'm not going to do that right now, I just thought maybe I should, um, you could go look and see if there's, uh, you know, a number of blogs out there. The more blogs you find about a given topic, right? Uh, the more interest you can guarantee is out there. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, you can look out for Facebook groups um, or other communities and forums where the uh, potential customers, uh, potential buyers of your online project, your online course will be gathering. Uh, think outside the box a little bit here. There are new platforms like uh, Mighty. Oh, what's the name? Of it? I can't think of the name of it. It's Mighty Community or... Uh, Mighty Networks, that's what it is. Uh, there's a, 
another platform out there called Mighty Networks that a lot of folks are coming off of the Facebooks and going to Mighty Networks and starting their own community so they don't have to pay uh, to reach the uh, the members of their community like they have to do in the Facebook groups. Um, you can look around at Amazon, search some of the products out there. If there are lots of books and uh, uh, pieces of products out there available and then look at Udemy uh, is there, or is it Udemy? Anyway, however you pronounce it, U-D-E uh, and look for uh, courses out there certainly give you a great idea if other people are leveraging that knowledge that you have uh, to share courses there and then check out the reviews here's a good little insider tip right here if you go and check out the reviews of say the Amazon books and magazines that may be out there as well as the Udemy reviews you can see what they really loved uh, about a given course or a book and what they thought was missing and you can make sure to make sure both of those are in there. If they loved, you know, something about oh, uh, the type of drywall to lick, right? Make sure that's in your course. Um, if they commented that, well, they forgot to tell me about licking dry drywall versus painted drywall. Well, make sure your course has that missing piece and you'll shine above the rest. You can actually use that in your marketing and I've mentioned social media time and again for your research lots of opportunities there so that is for my burgeoning starter person that's out there that we're gonna call the insider level number two let's call this guy the journeyman now as a journeyman you don't quite consider yourself the expert yet you know more than the average schmo does right on several areas um, and you're maybe you're living proof that what you know works right maybe you're into holistic medicine and you're not a holistic doctor but you have dove into the content you have a holistic doctor and you are living proof that what you are studying about and how you're interacting with this topic works and let's let's take this one step further and and you have already started a blog or have some little product or maybe you made your first um, you know insider course and it did well and now as you continue your journey you're learning more and you're moving on and you're leveling up your knowledge and you've taken that little bit of side hustle income and you're ready to try and make it full time now I think the challenge here as the journeyman is you probably know a lot of content that you could share. However, and this is, I think, the mistake that so many make. You want to jam it all into that single course. That's not where you probably want to go at this point in time. What you want to do is you want to get narrow and get specific into an area of your uh, passion project and Think about what it is you could share in, say, a uh, four to six week period. And let me be, let me even be more specific. What positive deliverable, what positive outcome can you make sure that the people that go through your course will get inside that four to six week period? Hmm? Now, if we're talking about something like, I don't know, uh, diet or exercise, right? Inside a four to six week period, you don't want to teach them everything about exercise. You want to say, I'm going to focus on folks that don't exercise at all. And I want to get them to start exercising. Well, that certainly means you're not going to be having them buying racks and, you know, uh, big old barbells and, and, and whole systems. No, you're going to get them from the beginning to get them up off the couch, make them non-couch potatoes to turn them into walking potatoes, to turn them maybe into uh, fast walking potatoes, to turn them into lifting things in the correct fashion potatoes, but they're still potatoes, right? But now you're making them more active potatoes. Okay, I've beat this uh, scenario up enough. The point is, what can you deliver to them in the next four to six weeks that they will benefit from? And let's narrow that down even further because in that four to six weeks of time frame, you're going to deliver it to them in chunks, 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 chunks. And maybe that's only four hours of total content, total delivery of the teaching. So now you've got to think, what can I teach them inside a two to four hour period of time that 
gives them that outcome in the next four to six weeks. Ah, now you've kind of narrowed it in. You've zoned into that specific part of your expertise, of your knowledge. That, my friend, is the journeyman because you'll be taking a limited amount of time, a limited amount of content, and delivering a meaningful result, right? That's that one, two, three punch, not one, two punch, one, two, three, right? Limited amount of time, very specific time frame, a very specific amount of content to give them a very specific result. Now, once you get through that arena, that bumps you up to the expert. Because as the expert, you have the expertise, you have the training, you have the experience, and now you're even getting paid for it. That journeyman course that you generated, right? You're going to get more. Now you've got your income coming in that will help you not only improve and give those people out there that journeyman um, result, right? That's very specific result. Um, but here's the thing. Your, your income doesn't quite match the depth of your knowledge. When you get to that journeyman level, you're going to be growing your knowledge probably at a significant rate because the people that are going through your journeyman level course are going to be asking you additional questions. You're going to see additional problems that you know you can deliver the results to. And I think traveling the road this way really helps you narrow in because you have expert level um, knowledge by this point, you haven't quite figured out how to leverage it to that expert level income. And I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but going through the path this way helps you tap in and listen to the conversations of those that you're teaching via your previous courses so that you can do two things really here. One, you again, you can find those potential customers and clients that are experiencing that next level of pain, right? That are outside the teachings of the previous courses and they're willing to pay for it. They'll say it inside the dialogue, inside the course, especially if you open comments. A lot of the platforms will allow you to do comments on there and they'll start typing, well, what about this? If you could solve this problem for me, right? And you'll start hearing those trends in those conversations. And if you have a an accompanying blog that goes with your course or a forum where they're gathering, be it by Mighty Networks or Facebook groups or wherever, uh, and that discussion opens up, they'll be putting it in those comments as well. So again, you're going to come back to the, the journeyman step of listening to the conversations uh, that are out there. But now those conversations are going to be your customers and your clients or those that were at least interested to step into the conversation. Maybe they haven't bought from you yet because your previous level content, they've already solved that problem. They have the next level problem and they're asking you about that. And here's another thing, now that you have those folks into um, your area, into your forum, into your little network, perhaps it's time just to interview them. Ask your target audience about their problems that are in your area of expertise. You're now listening to, to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. And let's stretch it one step further. Something like I, I, I've done many times on this podcast is bring in other folks that are uh, experts in your same field or maybe a very specific niche in say in the same field or an ancillary field just outside so if you're talking about diet and exercise and your focus on the exercise we'll bring someone in it's all about the diet right and and bring in something in and mark uh, what it is that you can do to help them along those struggles and this is just not opening your ears, although that's very important. We have two ears and one mouth and we should be using them at that ratio. But you'll want to engage into discussion, engage in the communications with those folks, uh, not only in your groups, but in other groups that are outside of yours on the same topic that you're looking to pilot or that you're currently piloting by this point. And, and this can be in multiple ways, right? You could do this uh, through email, right? You could have some email exchanges with them, go straight into their DMs on Facebook, go into the groups. LinkedIn is another great place for groups, depending on what area of focus you are. Uh, social media is still out there and, and doing very well for engaging uh, back and forth discussions. But you want to reach out and participate 
two-way conversations um, and pass out some of your best insights, some of your best advice. And people are going to go, well, man, he's out here giving this away, uh, away for free. I wonder what his paid content is. Here's what I found. There are folks out there, and I can quote probably a half a dozen of them. Uh, there's one called uh, Grow the Show for Podcasting. Where he's literally going on a podcast and giving away the very content that he's selling for free. Here's the, here's the catch. He's only giving away a piece of it once a week, and then the next piece, and then the next piece, and then the next piece. And if someone wants to get all that content for free, they're welcome to, but they're just going to have to listen to it over time. If they want it all at once, well, then they got to pay, and then they have that direct access to them as well. You could do the same thing. The same thing that's in your course, you can start dropping that content out there. All those wonderful gems, all that great advice, a piece at a time, a piece at a time. And then the next thing you know, people are coming to you to do, where do I get all this at once? How do I get you to coach me? How do I get you to, to teach me? And you can say, here it is right here and point them to your sales page. Just that easy. Um, and then you could also run uh, live coaching calls. Get on a live call. You could use Zoom or any of the other uh, live streaming platforms and stream it out to all your social networks at the same time where you coach someone live, a one-on-one -on -one 15, 20 minute coaching session and you can learn about the issues and the uh, questions they have that come up most frequently, hand out advice, people that want that advice would be hungry for it and listening and you be you're putting yourself out there as that expert and then at the same time you're garnering here's what I need to make sure is that my expert level course and then I think last but not least is obviously uh, surveys right you can do the simple surveys here's the question here's the response leave some free, free form areas for answers uh, as well but here's a uh, just a quick warning when it comes to surveys and we've probably all seen them right you see a survey come across and maybe you're willing because it's someone you trust or someone you're passionate about or a topic you're passionate about you get the survey and you click on it and you see it has 87 questions or 27 questions you're like oh my god i'm never going to get through this or if it's like one of those uh, surveys where you just click clicking next you'll get about four or five eight questions in you're like good gosh how long is this and down there at the bottom it'll say you know eight of 27 you're like screw this i'm done and you and you're out so i would urge you to maybe ask three to five questions tops you know, three is really good. Just narrow the focus so that you can give them some, uh, you can get some in-depth, uh, responses rather than giving, if you, here's what, here's a great way to put it. You figure they're willing to spend five to 10 minutes. Now you can have them spend that five to 10 minutes across 27 questions, in which case you'll probably get a handful of people to do that. Or that same five to 10 minutes on three questions. Which one do you think is going to give you the more depth of answers? Hmm. There you go. Think about it that way. All right. So that's level number three, the expert. Last but not least, this level here is the one we're all striving for and probably the one that we're trying to model when we're still the insider. And that is the professional. As a professional, you are the expert and you're even a notable one, right? Maybe there's lots of folks out there that when someone says, I need help with X, the first one that pops in, or maybe first one or two or three that pop into someone's mind, you're on that list. And you're making a good income from your expertise. That could be as a, I don't know, a paid consultant, a speaker, just online courses. Maybe you have a, a paid uh, mastermind, whatever it may be. You're making a, a pretty decent amount of money for what it is your expertise is around because people are willing to pay for you to share your knowledge with them. But therein lies the catch, right? Your income is going to be ceilinged by the number of, oh, let's use a lawyer phrase, the number of billable hours that you're able to put in. So in order to scale your income, you decided you're going to put together a course. You have the expertise, you have the reputation, you already know from everything you've gone through to get to the professional level that there's enough demand for your knowledge and people are willing to pay for it at the level you want to be paid. So 
what are your next steps as the professional? Well, I think one of the pieces of advice I would hand you would be to test the waters. I get it. Tracy, you just got finished saying I just proved everything. Well, what you can do is you can put together a little mini course instead of investing all the resources, the time, the money, and the team into creating a full on big ass course. <laughs> I just rolled out. Um, you could create a little mini course. And this comes back to what we talked about earlier and help you validate some assumptions. And as the, uh, as the prospective students or students go through it, you'll find out what they really want you to teach. And you'll get from, at the same time, you'll get familiar with teaching online, which is a little different than probably how you may have been doing. It's not quite the same as doing those one-on-one -on -one live coaching calls or one-on-one -on -one live coaching calls, you know, face to face. It, you have to present a concept or cover and reach the masses in a way that you want it to be understood. So we're going to come back to the very uh, tip I used earlier. What, what result do you want to share within the next four to six weeks? Maybe it's, you know, uh, eight weeks. I don't know, a little, uh, but a tight time frame. At the end of these six weeks, at the end of these four weeks, my students will be able to Bing, bang, bang, right? Whatever you want them to be able to do. And then after that, if you've nailed that down, okay, now here's what I want them to be able to do. And it's got to be very specific. This is going to be part of your marketing too, right? What, what type of mini course do you want to give? And at what price do you want to give it at? And I think inside of this, you want to include how much interaction you as a professional want to have, right? Maybe you have, you know, a, a complete email course, right? I'm, I, well, my first course was a complete email course where I taught folks. Maybe you want to do a uh, large group coaching where you're going to do some videos and then you're all going to get together uh, periodically in a large group and go over the content, ask the questions. Maybe you do live boot camps, right? We're here. We're, we're going, I'm going to deliver everything to you at one time over a three day weekend, um, to a large group of people. These, high types, high touch type of courses um, are much like one-on-one -on -one coaching and small group training, right? Or maybe you want to, um, maybe there's a mix you want to do. Hey, I'm going to deliver some content by email or by PDFs or by videos. And then we're going to get together once or twice a week uh, via Skype or Zoom or whatever video conferencing or teleconferencing combinations that are out there. And now the student gets to go through the learning content with you teaching them and then gets the opportunity to one-on-one -on -one, uh, ask you the questions during those uh, video and teleconferencing sessions. Once you have that combination laid out, well, now it's time to plan the curriculum for your course. Now, when you do this, don't get all ah, like me. Don't get too detailed. Okay, day one is this, day two is that, right? I think you want to have a quick bullet point. And here's why I want you to have this quick bullet point. Here are the pieces I need to teach them to get them to that ultimate uh, result that you promised to deliver. Because if you get too detailed, you're going to deliver that, uh, give it to, excuse me, if you get too detailed in order to deliver that ultimate result, then you might not hear your students as much as you need to, right? Because day two, we're going to do this. And, but when you get to day two, the students are going, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? You'll be so focused on, well, we need to get past this in order to get to day three, four or five and so forth. Whereas if you have it kind of loosely, we have to get through A, B, C, D, and E. Um, and then that enables you to open your ears and not be so drilled in on just the curriculum. I think if I if I had to narrow it down, I know I'm babbling here a little bit. I just want to make sure I, I make this very clear for you because this happens at all the levels. You want to make a list of the big concepts that you're going to have to ensure your students understand and have to learn. Those, those are going to be your, your main lessons. And each lesson can have some bullet point topics that you want to cover. Here's what I would suggest you do. You have three big topics. And inside those three big topics, you have three main lessons, three by three. If you can keep within that three by three, that enables you to convey your 
expertise, your professional expertise, and still leaves you enough bandwidth in your head and for your ears to hear the concerns of your students as they're going through. You can say, hey, I'm going to address that over here in this one, or no, you're right. I missed that as I was laying this out. Okay, so that's planning your curriculum. And the last one is obviously you want to sell your course. You're going to get out there. You're going to prime your network. You're going to float the idea of this pilot course. Offer them, you know, anyone who's interested in it and enroll them. And then finally, you're going to deliver. But it's not just deliver. I think you want to deliver this with the attitude, what I want to say, of a scientist, right? I have a hypothesis that if I teach you this, you'll get that. And if you go into it with that type of attitude, as things start to unfold, you'll either prove or disprove that hypothesis. If the hypothesis is wrong, well, then you'll go back in, alter the, the course, the experiment, if you will, and make the changes that you think need to be made or that your hearing need to be made in order to deliver the result that you promised. Again, go in with that attitude of that uh, scientists so that you can mold and shift. You want to take all these ingredients and get that ultimate result. To do that, you might have to shift around the order of the ingredients being added to the recipe. So let me ask the question, where at are you? Which type of course creator are you? Are you the insider? right? You're still, you're just passionate about it. You're still learning. You're early on in the journey. Maybe you're a, a week, a month, a year into your passion project and you want to educate others and bring them along. Maybe they're at zero. You want to bring them up to a week, a month, and you're just two or three or four steps ahead of them. That's fine. You can still create a course around that. Are you the journeyman, right? You are the expert. People are starting to come to you and ask you questions about it. So you really think you have some great content to get. What do you want to, what result you want to get them? You get them in a short period of time and that's your course. Um, and then here's the cool thing about that. Once they do that, they're ready to take, to get that next result. Dude, you did such a great job at getting me physically healthy. How about my mindset? Or how about you did a great job on increasing my pecs, right? Uh, I, I made, yeah. anyway, that wasn't my pecs, right? You, my, my pecs, now I want to work on my biceps, or now I need to work on my legs, right? Anyway, you, you see the same thing. Uh, if, it, if it's in cooking, hey, you taught me how to cook these great meals. How about desserts, which is a completely different arena, right? So are you the journeyman or are you the expert? Now that you're the expert, and you have all these people that have been telling you all these great pieces of information that they want to learn about. You know, you can start teaching them or are you the professional? Now you can start mixing this next level, bringing people into mastermind groups, doing these great events uh, and building up to that next level. Whatever it is, find your area and go in there with some of the tips I shared with you, and I'm sure you're gonna be a great success. Now, before I leave you, as I always do, I wanna ask one thing. Down in the comments, or shoot me an email, tracy at darkhorseschooling.com, what questions do you have about online course creating, about creating that course, no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're the insider, the journeyman, the uh, expert, or the professional, there's gonna be questions you have. I want to be your journeyman or your expert for that arena. Ask those questions. Email me, tracy at darkhorseschooling.com. And whatever questions you may have. And I will make sure they get into these videos and onto this podcast so that you can get those questions answered as quickly as heck. Maybe even bring you on the show and have a two-way conversation with you about those questions so everyone can learn at the same time. And with that, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully. I take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. How do you know this? Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman. Hey.